Hello everyone, this is Taryn with Wonderfully Made Handcrafting and welcome back to Theology Thursdays. We've taken quite a big break, but I'm so ready to get back into studying the Westminster Shorter Catechism with you all. And these are the two main books I read, the Westminster Shorter Catechism for Study Classes by G.I. Williamson. And then this one is Training Hearts, Teaching Minds by Star Mead. And it's more geared towards children. It's like a short devotional each day as they go over the Westminster short of catechism. But today we're working on questions 16 and 17 as that's how they're grouped in the Westminster Shorter Catechism book that I'm reading. And I just wanna kind of go over and show you all the other cards that I had previously worked on. It, it's been probably six months, maybe a little bit longer since I've done these cards. Um, and I just love looking through them. I think they're going to be a great um, study resource for me as I work through this with my kids year after year. I just think this is really important for people to know um, theology and kids to know theology. So how I've come to set up these videos, if you haven't seen my previous ones, um, is I basically do my studying the week before in these two books and in the Bible, obviously, and um, just from different resources. And then I'll come here, sit at my desk, create a card with the questions on the back side, as well as the supporting verses in the Bible. And then I come here and just do a voiceover for you talking about those questions as you see me craft. It just works out better that way because then um, there's something for you to watch as I talk about this. But also, my kids don't allow me too much time to do voiceovers. So this kind of kills two birds with one stone where I get to um, talk to you about the questions, but you also get to see what I am creating. So before I jump too much into the questions today, I did want to make note that I am using Lindy's new magical powders in the sifter jar. Now, these are the new jar that Lindy's just came out with. It has the little holes on the top of the jar um, once you open it. And so you can actually tap it out just like the shaker bottle. However, this is in a jar and it has the same amount of product as um, the shaker bottle. So it's an awesome deal. It comes in these fun under the sea colors, which is why I'm using bright colors today, but you can see me here. I am grunging it up just a little bit um, because I can't have anything too, too bright. I do have to add some antiquing. Um, but anyways, I do not have an affiliate with Lindy's. Um, however, I do have a rewards code. So I will link that down below. That will give you $5 off. I believe these sifter jars are $5.50. So basically you have to pay 50 cents. Okay, so before I talk through the whole video about crafty stuff, let's jump into questions 16 and 17 of the Westminster Shorter Catechism. So question 16 says, did all mankind fall in Adam's first transgression? And the answer being, the covenant being made with Adam, not only for himself, but for his posterity, all mankind descending from him by ordinary generation sinned in him and fell with him in his first transgression. And question 17 is, into what estate did the fall bring mankind? And the answer being, the fall brought mankind into an estate of sin and misery. Then we read in Romans 5, 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And Romans 5, 19, By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. And for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23, and destruction and misery are in their ways, Romans 3, 16. In these two questions, we learn that we are born as sinners and that we fell also during that first fall as Adam was our representative. In Acts 17, 26, we read that God hath made of one blood all the nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And we see this unity and oneness with Adam. And then G.I. Williamson talks about how the fruit of that tree is rotten. And as he writes, yes, of course, it is simply because the fruit derives its entire existence 
from the evil tree. It is a sort of extension of it, and we would not expect anything better. For out of evil, only evil can come. In much the same way, the Bible assures us that no descendant of Adam, born by ordinary generation, can possibly be other than corrupt in nature. For who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Asked Job in chapter 14, verse 4. And obviously we have to say by ordinary generation because we do know that Jesus came as a man and that he did live a sinless and perfect life. As we look to Adam as a representative in regards to sin of the human race, we may um, feel that it is unjust or unfair. However, God ordained our relationship with Adam prior to him even sinning. And God would not just place innocent people um, under Adam's uh, sin just because he wanted to. In Psalm 58, 3, we read that we are just as sinful as Adam. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. However, there is hope. We see a parallel between Adam and his sin and Christ and his saving power. Um, and we see that in Romans 5, 12 through 21, which I'm going to read for you. It says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result of that one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, Grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. G.I. Williamson sums it up so well in this ending paragraph. He writes, In this parallel, there are differences as well as similarities. The main difference is that our condemnation in Adam is a matter of strict justice, while our justification in Christ is a matter of mercy only. But the point that we wish to emphasize here is that the very representative principle which brought death and condemnation to all men is also the means of bringing eternal life. Let us not cherish any enmity then against God's dealings with us in Adam. Let us acknowledge that God has done that which is right and good, even though we do not fully understand it. And let us above all make sure that we heartily embrace the offer of God's free grace in Christ and cast ourselves upon his representative work that we might be saved. So as we look at questions 16 and 17 and realize that yes, indeed, we did fall in Adam's first transgression, let us remember that God has provided a savior for us. And that no matter how hard we try and how many good works we do, we cannot save ourselves. And so we have to turn to Jesus. So as I turn to finish up this tag, I'm just thinking over these questions and answers and um, realizing that although there's sometimes where we may feel like angry that Adam is our representative thinking that we are so much better, but we are absolutely not. We are sinners just the same as Adam in need of a savior. Thank you so much for hanging with me as I studied the Westminster Shorter Catechism. I know they aren't everyone's favorite videos, but I think they are so important because you need to know why you believe 
what you believe. You should be able to back it up with scripture. And that is why I'm personally studying this catechism. I know there are some other catechisms that, that are pretty good. Um, just make sure, you know, you're following a catechism that is of sound doctrine that lines up with the Bible. Obviously, that's very important. Um, but yes, it's super important to know why you believe what you believe and that you can back it up. So that is why I do these videos. It's as much of a good thing for me as it is for you. And so that is why I love them. And yes, if you're looking at this tag and thinking, wow, that is really bright for Taryn. It is, and I am loving it. Um, I sent some um, photos to my friends um, yesterday showing them the picture. I'm like, it looks so much like me but not like me all at the same time, um, meaning my style of how I usually journal or do crafty stuff. And I really am loving it. It has been fun to add these bright colors. Um, Lindy's has definitely made me try to, you know, branch out and use some things that I may not be used to, but I am loving. So to finish this off, I am just taking this mint tape off the back side of this tag. I put that mint tape on to protect the backside so it doesn't get all splotchy. It does a fairly good job. Um, I do have the four inch wide um, tape. That way I can cut it in whatever you know width I need. And I just added some marquee letters that say 1617. So I know that is the questions I'm working on through this tag without looking at the backside. But then this tag is done. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Wonderfully Made Handcrafting. I'll try to link everything I use down below in the description as well as that rewards code for Lindy's, so make sure to check that out. I hope you have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.